Yes, he's on, he's on. Woo! Hello again and welcome back to the Tarantula Cave. My name's Martin and in this video we're going to look at pairing my dead leaf mantis. So first up here's my adult female dead leaf mantis. This is just a video I took a while back of her doing her threat display. Absolutely amazing. Look at that beautiful eye spot. Hello. One of the best things about keeping this species, because obviously they have amazing camouflage to look like a dead leaf, which is where the name comes from. But if they are under real threat, they will flash the eye spots up to scare off a predator. And here's the male. I got him from Mantis Den, so shout out to Mantis Den for that. He was only a couple of molts away and he actually molted twice in a very short space of time to become an adult. Here they are in the breeding chamber. I basically put the female's enclosure into a larger enclosure, um, took the lid off and then tried to provide um, an easy means for the male to access. I had a lot of, a lot of help with, um, with how to do this. Basically everyone said that uh, the thing to do is to feed the female kind of before you pair them to make sure she's as big as you can possibly get her so she's not hungry. Um, because obviously prey mantises are famous for eating the male during mating. But then also, um, the advice was to try and feed her during the mating process. Uh, so whilst, after you've introduced the male, you still try and feed the female. And actually, in some cases, you continue to try and feed her whilst they're actually mating to dissuade her from eating the male. Here's the jump. Absolutely amazing. Here it is again, a bit slower. I've seen a few um, videos of this and it's fascinating because quite often the male will jump on the female and spin in midair. So he's actually facing her abdomen um, before he turns himself around. I don't know why that is, but it seems to be quite common practice in um, certainly in dead leaf mantis. So once he's on and kind of in the right position, he's effectively using his forearms to, to hold onto her shoulders, or if you like, the top of her abdomen. Um, and then he just clings on while she walks around. So it was quite funny to watch. You know, he's basically got to maintain his balance and maintain his hold on her back um, without falling off. And I suppose, from a biological perspective, this is kind of the female's test of the male's fitness, if you like. If she can walk around and he doesn't fall off, that's probably a sign that he's a a good male to breed with. So she took him for a little walk around the uh, around the setup. But then I got a bit worried because I wasn't sure whether she'd be able to hold on to the um, the plastic sides of the tank if she got out the top. So I had to find a way of giving them a bit more support when she got to that top corner. But in the end, what I decided to do was um, get my tweezers. So I put, put a pair of tweezers and balance them between the side of the larger enclosure and the top of the cork bark. So she had something to grip onto for her wanderings. But I wasn't sure, you know, I wasn't sure when she would stop moving around. But I think what she was trying to do was to get under cover so they could mate in a position where, um, well, where I wouldn't be able to observe them directly. So she sort of stopped here underneath the cork. And you can see in this picture that the male has actually, um, you know, their, their sexual organs are connected. He's already curled his abdomen round. It's very clear in this picture. So there they are mating. Now the mating process for this species takes hours and hours and hours. I did originally do it as a bit of a live stream, um, but it starts to get boring pretty quick if you just got to watch a pair of mantises locked together for hours and hours and hours. In this uh, in this image, you can see that I actually added another piece of cork bark for them to grab onto. Um, the camouflage is amazing. I mean, you would never, if you were in the in the forest, you would never see these animals mating <laughs> because they'd be so well hidden in the leaf litter. What a beautiful species! There you go. There's another closer image of the the locked abdomens. 
So there you have it, the first time I've ever bred a mantis species. Uh, I tried with my ghost mantises a while ago and the female ate the male. It was a complete disaster. Um, so obviously this is brilliant news and even better, the female's already laid an Uthica. So in a few weeks time, hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll have baby mantids. So here's the thing, I got my female deadleaf mantis from Guy Tansley from Bugs and Stuff and GiantSpiders.com. Now Guy has just filmed his episode of my series, If You Could Only Keep 10, where I ask YouTubers, if you could only keep 10 tarantulas, what would they be and why? It's a really, really good episode. It includes footage of tarantulas filmed in the wild um, and you've got to check it out. If you want to make sure that you don't miss out on any content on this channel, then all you have to do is subscribe and hit the bell icon below to be notified every time I post.